In last episode, three virions managed to survive the mucus barrier. They randomly moved towards the cells of the nasal epithelium and landed on a goblet cell. These cells produce mucus and the mucins proteins of the last episode. Many different proteins are found in the goblet cell membrane, most of them are used to detect outside signals, but none of them evolved to be the receptor of a virus. However, the virus did evolve to bind to different cell proteins that favorably position them on the membrane. With the first proteins that the spike protein interacts with are the heparin sulfate oligosaccharides of the syndican proteins. The oligosaccharides of heparin sulfate bind in the positive domain of the spike protein. These proteins serve exactly as platforms in which various proteins bind to approach more efficiently the cell membrane. Advantageously, the coronavirus evolved to use it to its benefit as a co-receptor. Once it is anchored it randomly approaches the cell membrane and subsequently binds with another protein called neuropolin 1. The function of this protein is to regulate cell growth and organization in tissues, but the coronavirus also evolved to bind with it and use it as a co-receptor since it positions the virion at the perfect height of the membrane to bind with another protein called angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2. This protein is an enzyme that hydrolyzes the molecule angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And it is essential in regulating blood flow and blood pressure. ACE2 is at the ideal height to position the spike protein on the cell membrane so it can anchor itself to it, so the coronavirus evolved to use it as the main viral receptor. But the spike protein has to be activated just at the right moment it is positioned on the membrane, because it only works once, and if the spike protein is activated before being positioned on the membrane its energy gets wasted and the virion becomes useless. So how is it? That the virus manages to activate the spike at the right moment. In an ingenious way, the spike protein evolved a cleavage site that needs to be hydrolyzed by a protease in order to be activated. A protein that participates in proteolytic cascades called transmembrane protease serine 2 or TMRPSS 2 is the one that binds in the cleavage site and hydrolyzes it in two parts, S1 and S2. The S1 part remains attached to the ACE2, and the S2 part begins to fold itself extending towards the cell membrane. At the end of S2 part there is a series of hydrophobic amino acids that anchor into the cell membrane. And this is why it is very important that it gets activated once positioned on a membrane. The spike protein keeps folding into a lower energy state and in the process fuses the cell and viral membranes. In this way, the inside of the virus ends inside the cell, and the genetic material together with the nucleocapsids floats in the cell cytoplasm. But this is not the only route that the coronavirus uses to enter the cell, it can also enter through endocytosis. Goblet cells produce huge vesicles filled with mucus and proteins, this constantly adds membrane to the cell. To avoid membrane overgrow the cell needs to endocyte the same amount of membrane that it exocytes. In this membrane recycling, several membrane proteins get endocyted, and since the virion is anchored to the membrane it opportunely gets into the interior of the cell within a vesicle that is transported through microtubes by a protein called dynein. But this route is the more hostile of the two, the cell has designed a series of security measures to prevent the entry of pathogens. This was binding, fusion and entry of the virus into the cell. In the next episode, we will see intracellular immunity versus the coronavirus. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it and share it.